Hello all, GC13 here. Welcome to video number four of our Prison Architect Alpha 14 tutorial. Um, somebody was nice enough to point out to me down here that I did a bit of a goof. You see I have two extra saws where there should be presses. We're going to take care of that today. It actually gives me the opportunity to show you guys um, a little quirk of the way dismantling machines in the workshop works. And I'm going to show you the well, what I think is the easiest way to go ahead and get around that. You see, so you see, I went to the uh, machinery and I told my workmen to go ahead and dismantle that. So uh, once they finish, this will be sitting here on the floor in a box. And uh, with anything else um, from anywhere, the workmen would eventually come and take this box to storage. However, you'll notice that the workmen aren't really all that interested in taking that box to storage, so we can go up here to the Jobs tab and see what the deal is. And we see right here, Assigned Move Prisoners is the Move Workshop Saw to Storage job. So there, the, let me, let me get somebody in the canteen here, and I'll send some to the workshop too, just so we can keep eyes on this. But you'll notice that since the this is a prisoner's job to move this to the storage. It's, you know, obviously not going to get done until there is some work time in the schedule. And we look at our regime and we see we don't have a whole lot of that. Actually, let me, I'm going to adjust our regime a bit. We'll have free time here. Uh, yep. See, clearly putting in that second cooker helped because we have uh, lots of extra food now. So, and I don't think we need an extra, extra hour of eating. So we're gonna we're gonna go with single hour eating cycles. So we'll just change this to free time, and we'll put in a couple hours of free time in the middle. And that that's usually what I like to do. Four, two four or five hour blocks with a couple hours of free time in the middle. That that usually serves me well. And we'll just have morning mail and evening mail. And really, I could give them less sleep. Um, we'll see how their sleep need looks here. And we'll just dial them back one hour every night. So this will get take care, taken care of first thing. But I also want them to start being productive relatively quickly. So we're going to go ahead and right on top. This isn't going to hurt anything. Just put in uh, two more, two new presses, and we look up here. We're running pretty, pretty low on juice here, so we're going to go ahead and put in another capacitor. And you'll notice I had a problem in the at the end of the last video with the electrical cable. I'm going to go ahead and you see how it thinks that I have one electrical cable? It's seeing this as part of my stockpile, even though this is a stack of 10 that is at the same time installed. Um, we'll, we'll fix that later. Um, we'll just, I will again show how to uh, deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and try to install the cable I will need to put in two more, two more call, or two more rows, I mean. Two more rows of electrical or of machinery and you see this last one is uh, queued up. It's started on, I don't know, it's started on only only the one. I guess because the workmen are still, oh, here we go. That's a little bit of license plate money right now. And up, oh, there we go. Now we got those last two, or those next two. I'm working on that. Now we can sit here for a while, and I'm willing to bet that they're not going to go, not going to try to do anything about this electrical cable. So, again, the workaround is to see that well, I have one job that they're not starting. I'll just put in a second job. Wait until they start, or wait until they start on one of these guys. See, I put in. Let's say this is job number one. I put in job number two. They buy the cable for job number two, and they start work on job number one since it was in the queue first, and now I can remove job number two. But let's get rid of that phantom stockpile. We're going to go ahead and have them dismantle this cable, and eventually they'll come up here, and that will turn into actual storable electrical cable, and we shouldn't have to worry about that anymore. We should be fine. 
see. That's a, that's a stack of 10. Eventually they'll move that to storage where it belongs. Uh, yes, and since I am waiting for the morning to go ahead and go ahead and move the those two workshop saws into the workshop where I can place them because I can try to place it right now and it it's just not going to install so I'm not even going to try but while I am waiting for that I want to I want to get this shower turned into a proper zone so that I can assign easily assign some guards to it in the morning again just keep everybody out of trouble looking at the looking at the needs report yeah, they should be pretty good. Hygiene will obviously be a lot higher by the time we get to by the time we get to the morning because we have several hours of night time. And let's see, I'll go ahead and put in <coughs> just get these two presses installed so that I, all that my workmen will have to do in the morning will be to put down these two workshop saws and we'll have most of our workshop done. Now, moving these boxes to the uh, storage, um, I was trying to mention before, but I got sidetracked, I need to make sure that they're allowed to go into the storage room to put stuff down. So I'm gonna make sure that's marked as general population right now. And let's see, I'm also going to assign extra people here because the workmen or the work the prisoners who are working will prioritize working on a machine over moving a box. So I need to make sure I have more prisoners assigned to the workshop than there are machines for them to work on. Otherwise, they are not going to not going to ever get around to moving those boxes. And uh, someone was kind enough to point out that if I want to get rid of that, I just have to make sure I have walls selected on planning, and that will work out nicely. So. Thank you for the tip. That will that will drive me much less crazy now. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit more fence and then I'm going to actually put in that metal detector. Because you see, I have I have plenty of money and this workshop is going to be very profitable. It's going to get filled up very soon and we'll be good. One workshop will be all we really need. We're gonna have more, obviously. I'd like to I'd like to have at least two workshops. Let's see, low danger level. It's it's increasing, but you can see that's gonna that's gonna turn around real soon because they're uh, taking their showers and their hygiene needs are getting slammed into the ground. And having the having these two guards around will make them a lot less likely to start any fights. All that water flooding out of the shower reminds me I ought to I ought to put in some drains. Uh, another thing I could do would be to just put a large line of drains here. You'd think that I could get away with just putting a drain under the shower, but that's not how the water propagates. So you either have to form a you either have to form a line or just stop it from leaving the place you don't want it to leave. That's what I'm going to go ahead and go with. Now I can go ahead and get some power to my metal detector, and it will be ready to go by the time the workman or the worker shift starts. And you know, for the for the benefit of my workmen, we're gonna we're gonna speed up their trip a little here. Because you see, they move so slowly on the dirt, because we look here, dirt is a slow walk speed tile. Paving stone and concrete tiles are both fast. So obviously you'd prefer to have your workmen walking on that. Oh, they're working on that. And that'll just make it that much quicker to, to get my to get my sheet metal into my workshop. 
because these these saws do work more quickly than these presses. So and if I could keep the if I could make sure that I always had sheet metal on these saws, I could actually get away with permanently having more presses than saws. But since the workmen have a lag, there is it takes time for them to deliver. Um, it's usually it's usually better just to have one saw per press. And here we go, finally, prisoner getting around to moving these two saws. And as soon as they're laid down into the storage, I can go ahead and put them in here. Ah, I'll open the staff door for them. And get the workmen to do their thing. And we'll have a nice full workshop for them to work in. Let's see, I, I don't need the guards in the shower. That's that's a morning only thing. By the way, let's have a look at how many prisoners we might receive tomorrow. Twelve prisoners. We might try that. We might try to make that. Um, I don't think we'll have. I don't think we'll have enough. That's uh, that's an awful lot of people to do just at once. That's probably eight thousand dollars, and I don't think we'll get that much money from the workshop. We'll see. We'll see how we do. But I think our first priority should be to go ahead and fill up the workshop. We'll actually send in some extra tables because they'll pre they'll prefer to stack license plates onto a table if they can. But once the tables are gone, they'll start to say, "Hey, I'm going to take this over this corner over here." So we'll help them make the right decision. To be honest, uh, this free time isn't all that necessary. The prisoners have they're pretty looking pretty good on the their needs all right, right now. So I really could short go ahead and shorten this to an hour if I wanted. I'm just sending a sending a guard up to the common room so I can see what's going on in here. Um, eventually, I'm going to have closed circuit televisions. Maybe, maybe it will. Since, uh, since it's going to be so long until the next alpha comes out, I, I figure we'll probably go long enough on this one to get some closed circuit television cameras. It's not a huge priority in a prison that's running so smoothly. It, it's more of just a nice to have rather than a necessary. But um, a lot of people say that the common rooms don't do anything. Um, as you can see, they're clearly using this common room here. But if you find that your prisoners don't like to use your common room, which as you can see is marked as a common room, that's important. Um, I also have the phone booths in the canteen. I could just as easily put televisions or pool tables in here. They would use them just as much. And you saw before I put the common room in, I had the TVs and phone booths in the yard and they were just as happy to use it there. So. You do not necessarily need a common room, but what you definitely need are phone booths and televisions. And we have one prisoner working on their family need. They're the only one who has any family need to speak of. Probably, uh, probably in visitation, if I had to guess. Nope. Anyway, at $100 a license plate, we're, uh, we're definitely looking pretty good here. Definitely looking pretty good. I think, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and carry on until we get to the... get to the nighttime sale of the license plates. And we have a few priorities. I can put in some more cells in anticipation that 
I'll get enough that I'll get a smaller batch of prisoners, or even if I had two days to prepare, I could put in those 12. We'll, we'll see how much money we get, and we might put in more cells. We might go, you know what, we're gonna, I'm gonna put two more people to work on the cleaning detail is the first thing we're gonna do. So we could put in more cells. We could put in some metal detectors right here so that the, they couldn't sneak spoons out because I, I promise you we're going to have a really bad contraband situation. Yeah, pretty high supply tools. So we're going to go ahead and order a search on the cell block and we're going to free up all of our guards so they can go ahead and get right on that. Maybe we'll maybe we'll unearth a tunnel. I, I am curious to see what routes they're running. I did anticipate that at least these guys here would try to run along this this square. You see, it's better to order a cell block search when all of the prisoners are out, because ordering a cell block search will also order your guards to search any prisoners who were any prisoners who were in the cell block at the time and they don't like to be unnecessarily searched. And as you can see that's not turning into an issue right now. But then again we're not searching all that many prisoners either so ooh. One of our guys is a poison. That's that's not good. So we're catching a, we're catching a lot of tools, but as you can see, I we haven't got a tunnel yet. We have a couple toilets left to search, so there we might get a tunnel on one of these. Two more to two to one toilet left. That's our you are our last hope, Felix, for a tunnel. Don't let us down. I don't know. He doesn't have any freedom need. Nope, no tunnel, no tunnel. Ooh, dog leash. So let's see where they're getting all this contraband. This poison was stolen from the cleaning cupboard. Spoon from the canteen. Spoon from the canteen. That dog leash was smuggled in. I figure all your spoons are gonna come from the canteen, that wooden spoon. Okay, so they're getting some stuff from the canteen, but nothing from, they didn't take anything from the workshop, so that's good. So yeah, we might, we might very well next put in uh, two metal detectors here, maybe uh, dissuade them from stealing from the canteen so much. Could also go ahead and narrow this. Spend fifty dollars, uh, take out this large jail door, narrow this, so we only need to put in one metal detector. But I, I think I like it being wide. We'll probably go ahead with two. And that really cut down on our su supply of tools all the way down, and we don't have nearly so many weapons. I think we would. Judging from what it changed, that would probably mean there's only other, one other weapon in the prison since I believe all we found for weapons was a single fork, unless that wooden spoon counts. Hmm. I don't even know. Well, anyway, obviously there's uh, not much to worry about here. It's looking pretty good, and I'm just... can't see all the license plates now because of the fog of war, but that's going to be a, a nice chunk of cash for us. Maybe we'll accept some prisoners, maybe not. You know what, we'll go ahead and give them a second laundry basket in here, since this one's always out. $7,600. So 
So that, that is probably enough. We could accept the 12 prisoners if we really wanted to. We could also go ahead and finish filling out this workshop. We only need to spend 6,000 more. And we'll probably spend uh, another 1,000, maybe 2,000 on capacitors up here. So that would, that would dry us up. But it would also mean we're getting in a pretty hefty sum of money and we can start putting in a lot more cells. I'll, uh, you know what, I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll think about it some, you guys can think about it some. Let me know what you want to do. And we will come at video five and we will make a decision and we will just grow this prison one way or another. Look forward to seeing you then. Until I see you guys again, I've been GC13. Happy building.